Yes. So what's next? Um, yeah, so as a reminder, what we've just done was just a demo. So we didn't expect you to be able to follow this along. Um, and now we're going to go to the parts where you actually do follow along. So we're going to interactive jobs. Uh, yeah, and this is more like hands-on typing stuff. So what does interactive jobs mean? Uh, so basically, just like whenever I was preparing this, instead of writing something to submit and see if it worked, I first tried running interactively. So basically, um, with the resources right there. And this let me do the debugging faster than submitting it, waiting, looking, rewriting, and then so on and so on. And because this is a good way to get your hands dirty and actually see how things happen, this is how we begin here. So, yeah. yeah. Mm, so maybe Simo, we should... What we yeah. do like last time, and maybe you're the talker and I'm the typer. Sure. Okay. So, uh, by the way, if you hear uh, some zoomies on the background, our new cat is, is running there, so don't be alarmed by it. Uh, yeah. So, introduction to Slurm. Let's start with this. So, we already talked about the queue system, but let's let's look at it uh, in a bit more detail. So, basically, there's this analogy that that is pretty uh, good. Is this the, like this HPC diner? So, basically, you can think of a restaurant. And if you walk into a restaurant that has like wait here for seating uh, site uh, or sign at the start, the the HPC system is basically that is the diner and it has different kinds of tables and the different kinds of tables are well for if you have party of two if you have party of four if you have party of eight there's usually a creature or a server who arranges uh, how the how the tables are organized so that the, you, the diner can fit as many people in, in there. Mm -hmm. So like, I guess you don't want a party of two occupying a table for eight and then there's someone waiting yes. for that. Yes, and, and, and basically you always have to tell the greeter what kind of resources you want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that if you keep that in mind throughout the, like today to our tomorrow, that will serve you fine. So so. Whenever you walk in into the HPC diner, you need to take into account uh, what you want to do uh, there. So in this situation, like uh, let's say the the queue system is basically like a like if you run in non-interactively, that's basically takeout. So you make your order and then you go and collect the food once the food has been. You're not eating it there in place, but uh, like interactive eating is basically you go to the table and you sit there and you do your work there uh, or you eat your food there. So interactive users is basically it's it's limited by you. That's that's the main thing. Like mm -hmm. we recommend non-interactive users because then it doesn't require like human intervention. Like if you ever like updated your computer and and pressed like yes and then you expect it to update. And then you come back the next day and then you notice that there was like a questionnaire box and then it like you still needed to click yes, but you didn't notice it the last time. And now you have to wait another three hours for the like the update to finish. That's mm -hmm. basically interactive usage. And we don't recommend that because that wastes resources mm -hmm. because like you, the human has to be there, like human has to but, be there to process the stuff. But there's uh, but some times interactive that... Usage is, yeah, you might need that. Like, for example, some people need to analyze interactively some big data set. So you request the resources, you do your things, and then you finish. So it's not the yes. most efficient, oh. but it's more efficient than for the human than trying to program it. Yeah, yeah. If you want a playground on a large, a larger system, or you just want to try out, let's say, compiling your program in the queue, in the cluster, that might be a good way of doing it. So should we just jump into it and yeah. start okay. running? So let's see. I will change to my home directory again here. Um, hmm. Yeah, here we go. 
Uh, okay, let's see. How do I yeah. want to arrange this? I guess and this you... is good. Uh, it goes a bit to the out of yeah, maybe. Yeah, but I'll keep yeah. adjusting it as it fits. Yeah. Okay. So on the on the small screen, you can see what commands Richard had typed in, yeah. like the history of the commands. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's let's see. Uh, yesterday, when we had the connecting to Triton part, we asked the host name command. So let's start with that, for example. Like we just run host name. So host name is a like a command line command that just tells where we are basically. And uh, now we are at the login node. So what we, where we are is basically where the commands will be executed. Like the terminal is connected to some machine, uh, the window that you have, and the commands will be executed there. So in this case, everything we type in this command box will be executed on our login node. But let's say we want an interactive session with, let's say, uh, one hour two, one hour interactive session with uh, with five hundred megabytes of memory or something like that. How yeah. would we type it? So to start off, there's s run, which lets us run things directly from the shell. So basically anything I might do, I can add s run in front, and then it will run instead on a node in the same environment with whatever resources we ask. Should I try running this or should I try requesting yeah, sure. more resources first? Let's do the simple case. Well, let's, let's try, yeah. Yeah, so so what we, um, yeah, that, that's actually, yeah, that's a better example than what I was thinking. Uh, so what we're now trying to, do is we are running the ho command host name, but we are running it in the queue. So we are running it somewhere else than the login node. So you see that we get, uh, we see that we are queuing, mm -hmm. and then we have a get some resources, and then we uh, get the output of the host name command. So yeah. it, do try this out at home. Like this, now we are at the point where we recommend trying out the same commands uh, that Richard is uh, running here. Mm -hmm. So try out and see what what job uh, node did you get? Yeah. Like you will get completely random nodes. You like the name doesn't matter. It's some node somewhere, uh, and you will get the resources from there. Yeah. But but you notice that if Richard, you now run host name again without the S run. Mm. So I'm you back. Notice. Yeah. yeah. You, uh, Richard is back in the login node. So when you just run with S run. It's basically like you go there and then you come back. You just go go to the compute node. You do something there and then you come back where you left off. Mm -hmm. So it's it's like this kind of like you went went to the office to do one thing and then you came back home yeah. basically. And I guess maybe we can clarify. Like I would often do this when I'm first testing things, but I wouldn't do this for any real kind of work because if I get logged out of Triton, then everything gets lost. So this is just mm -hmm. like getting started. So all we're doing is exploring the different slurm options here. Should we try adding some more other options to it? Like yeah, let's, what if let's... I wanted more memory or something? Yeah, let's do that. So by default, you will get uh, like 500 megabytes of memory, but that's the default we have specified. But if your code requires less or more, you should specify the memory requirement. Uh, so you, how you do it is that you type this dash dash mem equals, and then you can give it a number and a suffix like uh, kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, typically, yeah. well, 100 megabytes, for example, uh, yeah. might be a good one. And now, okay. If you do this, yeah, you, you can run it. And maybe afterwards we can check the history mm, to see yeah. what we have. So now we're running it, and we have specified a different memory limit. So, so the jobs usually they like they uh, you're given some sort of a memory like cap, and and if you, the job goes a bit over it, and nobody else requires. The memory it it will run, but if somebody else needs that memory, the job will be killed, because like the 
Q system needs to try to fit all of these different type of like Tetris blocks basically uh, there, and it it doesn't want the Tetris to go overboard so the game makes it over. Like it it has to always be able to fit the uh, Tetris pieces uh, there mm -hmm. uh, in into the compute node. So so yeah, it has to has to always know what the memory requirement. I guess it's uh, like you want. in the restaurant example, it's saying how many seats you need. Yes, basically. Okay. Uh, and now if we type slurm history, mm. we see the power. Yeah. Yeah, we see the, the latest jobs there. Uh, so each of them got a job ID and you can see what command was run. And the first command was run by the requested memory was 500 megabytes and the second command was 100 megabytes and and you can see on the on next to them in the max rss uh, column you can see what was the actual memory usage or the maximum memory usage yeah that looks about like what i'd expect from these okay so the other thing that the major like the memory is like something you want to specify uh, but the other major thing that you always want to specify uh, is time like how long mm -hmm. does the job run the default is i think one hour uh, but like if your job runs uh, faster or slower you need to specify a time limit and this is basically how long do you want the reservation to be at the table in your restaurant like how, are you going to stay there for a full free course meal or simple lunch like and and that will help the server in this case the queue system to arrange your place and you shouldn't request resources that you are not going to need because that will make it harder for the server to fit you uh, into the restaurant mm -hmm. and that it makes you wait longer in the queue like if you come mm -hmm. if you come to a restaurant with eight people and you want that okay we want to say, stay here for four hours they're having hard time to fit you in there and you have to wait probably mm -hmm. to the next day and, yeah. um, so that they can they have like a free slot for you so yeah. if you if you know that you okay i we we wanted the table for eight but we only four people are arriving we know that okay let's ask for a table for four maybe we fit in better mm -hmm. okay and so... we will talk a bit more about how to know what are the limits yesterday when they were already questions about what how do i know what my job asks mm -hmm. we will talk about that uh, in detail more yeah. later so let's see where are we in the lesson here um i think we, we have talk? a quick poll uh in the in the hackmd oh, you have yeah. people run yeah mm, let's see And again, what we're doing here is so simple, it seems so boring, but it's like the assignment zero. So if you can start with this, then the other things become much easier. It's better to do 10 things that are easy than to combine it all into one thing that's hard. Mm. So um, should we do uh, interactive? session and then have a small break maybe like a e... serial interactive uh, uh like s interactive one mm, yeah you mean with graphics or uh, uh just s interactive yeah like okay so we're going back to my shell and is this the section we want to be on uh yeah yeah uh yeah the graphics is something that uh might be relevant but it might not yeah. like uh, it, it it like it, the s interactive session is it works with you can get some graphics out of it but it's not necessary but basically the idea here is that let's say you want to run more than one command with s run and you don't want to queue each time you run this like you want to run some interactive stuff in the queue 
but you you get bored like okay i need to wait again in the queue when i want to run my next command i want to like i want to have a place where i i can just test out few things and then close the connection afterwards mm-hmm. like you want a small place where you can uh, fiddle with your things and then uh, you like you you want an interactive like a table for for a few hours or, mm-hmm. or hour or so yeah uh, so you can request that kind of a resource and that's done with this s interactive command which also gives you a possibility of using these uh, x forwarding uh, which is more technical but but you can you can do uh, some basic plotting with it but yeah uh, or something like that like i guess but, like what i'm doing here so yes so should i run it so do you want to describe richard what what we have here in the command yeah. line now so s interactive is a wrapper we have that um actually you can do a similar thing with s run but it uses all the same slurm options like the memory and time and then we'll launch the job and connect us to a shell there. So what Richard is now asking, like let's say Richard wants to like open a data set and co- like pick pick up the data set apart and look uh, um, maybe mm-hmm. you need to run the S run PTI option. Okay. I don't know why that didn't work. Um, okay. Okay, we have a demo effect running here. But, well, the yeah, demo if, effect if, is a very long tradition when doing live courses. Yeah. Yeah. If the S interactive doesn't work for you, you can also run. Do you want to run the S on that's just PTI? Yeah. Yeah. So, like this here. what we are. What Richard is now running is he's launching an interactive terminal in a node. So basically, like basically similarly, like you had take took the connection to Triton, you take took a connection to our login node uh, or to other login node. You can use then then ask for okay, I want another interactive like interactive session on a compute node where I can play freely, uh, then either this S interactive or this S run dash dash PTY. And at the end, you need to give bash uh, usually. Yeah. Uh, you can get this kind of interactive playground. So if you want to, Richard, run this command. Oh, yeah, you're I've already tried running. To. Yeah. So this uh, this will queue up probably a bit more because there's 20 gigabytes of memory requirement. But the queue is car- constantly calculating on the background who's getting where, and uh, it's trying to formulate uh, a place for Richard to run the stuff. Yeah. Uh, but so this is good if you know what you're doing, you have like, you want to do like some stuff and you want to do it interactively. But it's, uh, of course, uh, a bit of a waste of resources because it again depends on you to do stuff like uh, in the uh, in the queue. So, yeah. uh, so here to try to make it go faster, I selected the interactive queue now, but it's still maybe um, you need to specify a slot, like a, okay, okay, you got resources. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so and now you can see that name. yeah, if Richard runs the host name, he you notice that. Richard is running these commands on this P5 node. Mm-hmm. So so basically, Richard is now on some compute node where he has the resources he yeah. requested, and he can do whatever like he wants. Yeah. Uh, and and this is fine way of working if you have something that actually right, like uh, requires interactive usage. But of course, like like I said, we don't recommend this for long term stuff because again. If your computer crashes, if you close the window, if you close the terminal window, it will close the connection and that will like you lose whatever work was in progress. And also it requires you to be the gatekeeper of the machine. And mm-hmm. we like the actual benefit of these eight like HPC systems is that you can tell the machine to do 
bigger stuff than you could manage. So basically, like like I said yesterday, you can make this order to to China or some somewhere abroad, like completely out of your access. You can make an order for for tables, and they will fill it for you the order. But you don't have to be there and and manually do it yourself every time. So uh, you can just like fill fill out the order, and you will get the results afterwards. And that is better because then you don't have to be constantly there watching and the computer will do work for you and you don't have to do the work yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay, so where are we now? I think we've gone over most things. We've shown the monitoring your usage as part of the what we've done before. Um, mm -hmm. We've talked about setting the different resources. And maybe we should go to a break and people can work more themselves. Yeah, well, let's let's we could have a, like a ten minute break and then we can maybe or break an exercise session or yeah. Hmm, let's see what's our time. We could resume in half an hour and that leaves ten minutes for break and twenty minutes for playing with some of these other. Slurm examples down here. Mm. Yeah, maybe maybe we like uh, how could I say it like to hit the loma or like uh, like make the like a ten minute break so that people can stretch their legs and then we can answer Hakam the questions and do a few of the interactive yeah. exercises and then uh, uh, then we can. Uh, start focusing on non-interactive usage after mm -hmm. that. After that, but so so should we have a ten-minute break and then start the exercises? Okay, so we'll come back in ten minutes to describe the exercises. Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds good. Um, yeah. So break until break until x x o one. X x one. Welcome back. So now we're going to introduce the exercises. So I saw in the HackMD, there was a little poll there and some people said this was too fast. So that's sort of expected. Like we haven't even gotten to the exercises yet. So now you're gonna have 20 or 30 minutes to go and uh, actually do this on your own and take all the time you need. And we're gonna give you some things to work on. I point out right now here, this is the risk of S interactive. So I left the interactive shell open. So it's continuing to reserve my 20 gigabytes of memory even after I am not using it. So I should exit from that. I should have before the break. So, okay, so exercises. So here we see there's five different things you can try. Um, some of them are more practical, some are more philosophical. Um, but they give you some programs you can actually try running interactively. And then we will go and do it in a script. So during the break, someone was asking us why, like, why do we even do this interactively? Why not just go straight to making the script? And I mean, some people do. Some people will say, okay, like I need the script anyway. I'm just going to set it up and make it. Um, but I sort of like being able to see it live and see the stuff as it comes out and it makes the development faster. So anyway, you'll have some options. So in these exercises, there is a Git repository here called HPC examples. So if I run this command, let's see. Okay, I don't have it here. Actually, I will change to, oh, yeah, I'll just clone it here. I run git clone this. And, hmm. Okay, I'm going to enter my key. Uh, so what Richard is doing, the command uh, in the documentation, I'll post it into HackMD as well. There we go. Uh, the command will copy uh, from 
this public repository, it will copy these examples uh, via Git, via this version control system, because we okay. update the examples, we try to make them better. So we update them and we use version control to do that. So using Git, we can just get the, uh, get the examples faster. Yeah. Mm. Let's see. Yeah, so now that I've cloned it, we have this code here. And by the way, this is how we'd recommend you moving code around onto the cluster and so on. So here we are, and we have the different programs we need. So for example, we can we have ls, hpc, examples, slurm, something that will use a lot of memory. And then I can, if I push the up arrow key and then slide over, I can run it with Python. And it says it needs an option. It needs a memory option. So let's say 50 megabytes. And there it's going and allocating a bunch of memory and using goes up to 50 megabytes. So with that, you should be able to sort of go and do, well, example one is basically the basic experimentation of the above. Um, all of the different Slurm options and Slurm history and so on. Example two starts running something with time. So you see how much faster it gets when you use more processors and so on. Um, during the, yeah, and during the exercises, it's good to, like if you are part of the Zoom call, you can uh, ask the instructors there if you have any mm -hmm. quick uh, pr problems. Yeah. If you have other problems uh, uh, in the HackMD, you can also ask them and we'll go through yeah. the solutions after that. Yeah, please put Exercise. all the problems you have in HackMD so other people can see them also. And let's see. Number three lets you explore some of the other commands that will tell you about what's going on in the background and some more things. So, so yeah. And, and just to make it simpler, now we're just trying to the basically the etiquette of asking for a table. So if, if you have... Like if you've, uh, uh, I remember on a holiday trip when I was small, uh, I was the one uh, like asking for a table, even though I was the smallest of our family, like, because that child needs to learn how to, <laughs> now to, how to behave in a restaurant and, and ask for these kind of things, not saying that anybody is a child here, but, but the idea is that like, you have to learn how to get the resources you need and, and best way to get the resources is to just run the try the exercises and, and learn the learn the language of the queue system and it's it's uh, you have to like first start with just getting an interactive table just run one command in the queue and then we can get to more complicated stuff later on because mm -hmm. it will get complicated so it's good to learn the basics uh, like have a good good grasp, grasp of the basics yeah and there's a good comment in HackMD, it's good to change to your work directory before cloning this. So we'll talk about this at the end of the day, but there's different places to store your data. And um, the one for the big research data is work there, like this here. So, okay, should we go back to what, 20 minutes of time? And um, we'll resume on the stream after that. So until uh, 38. And if you need follow HackMD, you can comment when you are done and if you need more time. And also with your problems. So see you later then. Bye. Yeah. Welcome back, everyone. So if you haven't noticed, there's a little poll in HackMD you can use to let us know how you're doing. But if you're not done, we're going to demo it anyway. So 
you can keep trying to work while we do that. Yes. Yeah, so, so remember, like, uh, what we are trying to now focus on, and what kind of things we are focusing on, and that is just preserving the resources. Right? It's not like that is the first. Like, everything we do in the cluster goes through the queue, and that's why we need to learn how to uh, reserve the resources. So everything is about that. Uh, at the same time, I know that for many people, it's probably a lot of um, uh, new things with the shell and the command line. And that's something that's unfortunate. Uh, we'll have yeah. probably have to add more stuff on the shell. But but yeah. for now, let's try to keep it uh, like the minimal. There's also in the HackMD, there were questions from uh, users of other clusters. So some other clusters, they might have different flags that you need to add. For example, like partition or account, uh, so that you can get your job running in the like in the in the queue. Uh, so so do be mindful of that. Uh, in these room rooms, there's uh, instructors who should be able to help you with finding the correct flags for you. Uh, yeah. So yeah. sorry if if that confused anybody. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, I mean, let's this go. Is a common yeah. thing. You go to a new cluster and you have to figure out what the particular options are. But okay, yeah. so I think Simo will do a demo. So let's switch to his screen. And here we yes. are. So I have the git clone command here uh, that Richard posted. Uh, oh. And it will clone me the, the HPC example scrapers for you. So I will run this ls command to list files. And I see that there's HPC examples uh, folder here. Mm -hmm. uh, and now let's let's look at the uh, ses uh, the first exercise. And the first yeah. exercise was to run this Python HPC examples. I can use tab for auto completion if you're if you want to use the the tab tabulator, so you can faster fill out these commands. Mm -hmm. So slurm memory hog 50 megabytes. So now we are running something with Python uh, that asks for 50 megabytes of memory. So this is what Richard was running previously. So we see here that it, it asks for 50 megabytes of memory. And if I run the host name command, uh, you'll notice that I'm still running in the login node. So now I used 50 megabytes of memory in the login node. Mm -hmm. And of course, we want to run it in the queue. We are programs, so we have to run it there. So that, that was the A part of the exercise one. And exercise two, let's try running it uh, in the queue with S run. So I'll clear this up. Uh, there was a question in the HackMD, how do you clear it up? Clear, just typing clear, will, uh, and pressing enter will clear the terminal if you want to like start uh, from a, from a uh, fresh perspective. So let's run S run and add this memory 500 megabytes and then run the Python HPC examples slurm uh, memory hog 50 megabytes. And now we're waiting in the queue. So in other clusters, you might need to add an account or a partition flag here. Uh, mm -hmm in order to get it running, but like now it's queuing in. The... Yes. Now we are queuing, so we'll never know how long it will take. Most likely not that much. Yeah, okay, so now it run. And we see okay. uh, see the memory thing here. So now let's add the memory, increase the memory uh, requirement uh, that the program wants to run. So let's increase that. I press up arrow here in the, in the terminal so I can get the previous command that will make it faster for you to drive as well. You can use up and down command uh, arrows to scroll in the command line. So let's put uh, some requirement like, I don't know, 4G or let's say 5000 uh, M. Let's add two zeros to the, to the command and let's run it there. And let's see what happens. So now we are queuing. It might take a, it should take about the same as previously, because we are still asking for 500 megabytes. 
Okay, but now we got an error. So we see that the uh, job is queued and waiting for resources, but then it noticed that there's a OOM kill, so out of memory kill. So it ran out of memory. So let's let's put it somewhere a bit below. Let's let's put like two thousand megabytes, and let's see if that works. Okay, that run. So why did it run, uh, even though we asked only for 500 megabytes? Well, the answer was what we mentioned quickly previously, that there is some leniency. It depends on the cluster. Our cluster has a bit of a leniency that you can go a bit above the memory requirement if nobody else is using the memory, uh, wants to use the memory. Uh, but But usually you should want to specify the memory requirement to be something that uh, well, it will. The stuff will fit into memory. Okay, so then we have the D step. So let's use slurm history to check uh, how much memory it actually used. Uh, in other some other clusters, I think in CSC you need to use a bit different command, but uh, but you you can use other commands as well to check. So this is a wrapper that. Uh, should be available in many universities to check your history. Uh, I'll actually, you can give it uh, one hour so that it will give you the most recent commands. So now it's a bit hard to read because it wraps around, but we basically see that we have a this command that that run six uh, run with uh, fifty megabytes. Let's see again. So we have here one that okay. It, it runs so fast that it didn't uh, see uh, any output. Uh, like it didn't mm -hmm. record uh, what was the memory requirement. Like it says in the exercise, like the slurm history will only record like this memory. Uh, memory every like 60 seconds or so. So if there's like a huge spike in the memory requirement, it won't record necessarily. So let's clear the output and run the same srun command. Let's say the 5,000 mega, uh, megabytes. So now we know it will fail. Uh, or let's say a bit, low. let's say 1,000 megabytes so it doesn't fail. So we get the recording. Uh, so. Uh, oh, actually, yeah, sorry, sorry. I just noticed that in the exercise, there's a better example. So the, there's this uh, Python uh, uh, 50 megabytes sleep 60. So yeah, my bad. So now it's, uh, oops, sorry. Let's run it through the queue. So S run at the stop front. Let's sleep it. So now it's running. Uh, it's waiting. It's running for uh, for sixty seconds. It reserves fifty megabytes of memory and waits for sixty seconds. So now we get some uh, historical information of the job. So, so Richard, how did how would you say like um, when you're normally running stuff? Uh, how would how do you use like the Slurm history? Yeah. Well, usually I'll. Like pretty often take a look at it. Okay, my cat's trying to enter again, I think. Um, yeah, cat problems for both of us. So yeah, like I use it especially when I'm first running because people ask, were asking yesterday, how do you know how many resources a job will take? And the only way to know is by actually looking. So basically start with small stuff, run it, like make your best guess. If it's too large, make it smaller. If it's too small, it will fail, and then you know to make it larger. And that's just sort of like, that's how it goes. So here we run it for 50 megabytes, and then we slept for 60 seconds. And now when we run Slurm history, I'll clear the shell again. OK, I'll clear. <laughs> I run it Slurm history for one hour. Yeah. So now for the last job, so for this job, 
we see that the memory requirement was 500 megabytes and the actual usage was something like 70 megabytes. So that was what we asked for 50 and there's a bit of a bit of a overhead by the Python. So uh, it looks, looks uh, what we expect. Mm -hmm. So then there's the uh, second exercise. Let's uh, quickly go through that as well. So th there we run this uh, pi calculating program. So a program that calculates us a digit of pi. Uh, so let's run it. So time Python HPC examples, slurm pi and uh, 500 iterations. So we get an estimate for pi, not a very good estimate. Uh, but but it doesn't take that long. So let's mm -hmm. try adding one zero here. Well, now we get a bit better, still pretty bad, but let's try one zero more. And now we get, well, still we only get one, uh, one degree of accuracy. <laughs> okay, let's try running the queue. So now we're running again on the login node. So let's just I can use the left arrow to just go at the start of the program and add S run here to run it in the queue. So let's let's add one more zero, let's say, and and let's run it in the queue. Okay. Mm -hmm. So again, like this is just uh, asking for um, asking for more resources, asking running in the in the queue. So the output is a bit garbled now, but we get a lot better estimate for pi. In the example, there's also like this bit more advanced stuff on how to run it with multiple CPUs. Uh, we'll talk about this probably more later on so maybe we shouldn't focus on that right now let's yeah. just focus on the on the main thing which is running through the queue mm -hmm. and i think uh, yeah i think should we yeah do the next but, exercise or, or should we move yeah. towards well, the serial jobs i guess we can discuss what these say like very briefly so what mm. does S info show? Okay, so there are commands for the queue, like you can ask the queue manager things about the cluster itself. So yeah. S info will give you this kind of a quite a complicated looking. It depends on which cluster you're running, but it will it give you, you this kind of complicated looking there. view that yeah. tells you what kind of uh, machines there are in the cluster. Yeah. Then there's also this you can give it various flags like this mm -hmm. in a flag to see on a node yeah. level then you can use s right. let's let's not to... do that because it, okay. does yeah, it show only your that. jobs yeah or yeah uh it yeah for, okay. for, for, it shows for, everyone for jobs, many... so let's not do yeah. that yeah yeah for yeah. many of the clusters we have the slurm wrapper that like helps you to like the slurm history command for example it parses some of these more complicated commands yeah. you can type just slurm to see various features of the slurm command uh, we will talk about these when yeah. we now start talking about the serial like, jobs because yeah. they are more important there like to make it clear some people notice that slurm isn't installed on other things so the slurm is an extra thing that makes it easier to use but everything from mm. Slurm you can do with other things as well. Mm. Okay, yeah. So, so one one thing I would like to mention that in the in there in the um, uh, in the uh, documentation, there's a question like a, one of the exercise questions was that why not use like shell scripting and write multiple S run commands there. Mm -hmm. And the problem is that if the Exercise connection breaks, yeah, if the yeah. connection breaks, uh, you will lose uh, you will lose the progress. 
and also one if you have multiple of these s run commands you will always have to queue between them mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you don't necessarily want to do that you want to have one queuing like you want to queue once and then run multiple commands instead of like running multiple commands and queuing for every command and that's where we go to serial jobs so the next step in our way is is actually like we we run many of these commands but we can also run them uh so we can tell the com computer to run them for us so we we don't have to type them ourselves uh, every time we want to run these commands yeah okay is that enough for serial then should or no for interactive should we go on to the next section uh, yeah i think so I, mean, I think most of the questions have been answered either in hackmd or here mm. we could take a quick look and see mm. Mm. Mm, someone's like, uh... asking for another break yeah Maybe we should do the break and then go to serial. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, okay. let's have a five minute break and you can ask uh, if you have. Minutes. Oh, 10 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Let's do a 10 minute break. And if you have any questions, uh, still related to S -interact uh, interactive jobs, post them uh, into the. Yeah. Into the. Continue. Yeah. HackMD. Now, uh, let's. Uh, I will also put a poll there. Like, mm -hmm. is. Was it clear? <laughs> was the section clear or. Yeah. Okay. And when we come back, we start making these scripts to run stuff um, more. Okay. See you shortly. <laughs>